After showing off how I build DAW sessions from a blank canvas to a fully functional template, I think the next thing to show off are in fact those templates themselves. I have a lot of them, although many are very similar, just targeting different setups. Templates have been around for decades as far as I know, maybe even longer. Back in my day, a template might have been some cut-out cardboard thing you laid on a sheet of paper and drew shapes in order to cut out a perfect copies of the same thing over and over. I talk about creating prototypes and starting with templates in my modular custom case build series. And in business office suites like Microsoft Office, there are templates that start you off designing anything from a cover letter, resume, or a full fancy business letter or brochure. Basically what I'm saying is templates have been around longer than your great grandpa. And they are incredibly helpful for saving time and launching you towards creativity even faster. So here we go, my templates. Your DAW, or Digital Audio Workstation, likely comes with a set of project templates to get you started. Let's take a look at the built-ins that came with Pro Tools. Under the New menu, there's a dashboard that comes with, with Pro Tools. I think most DAWs start off with a What Do You Want to Do page like this. So if you're on the New Session grouping here, you can see if you, as soon as you check mark the Create from Templates, and I'm going to switch to the template group called Getting Started. Again, this is just Pro Tools itself. You can see that there are three templates here for creating beats or creating podcasts or doing a singer-songwriter session. Another example of some layouts is the post-production template group here where you could do a stereo post-production or a 5.1 surround post-production. However, I also have never used a single one of Pro Tools or Avid's uh, built-in templates. I have my own little pile here called JC Templates. This is where we started in the last video where I was showing off the Songwriter Quickie, which is kind of what this template looks like in the background here is my Songwriter Quickie. The only thing I might have ever used Pro Tools built-ins for was maybe learning how signal routing worked in Pro Tools itself. Switching over to Logic Pro X or 10 <laughs> real quick, which I won't get too deep into because I mostly use Pro Tools, but you can see Logic starts up with another dashboard type thing here called Startup, where you can create a new project from a template. I will say Logic's templates are way fancier than Pro Tools, and I absolutely can agree that Logic Pro is far more accessible to creatives than Pro Tools in my not so humble opinion. I've been using Pro Tools for 15 years, and I can tell you it really sucks balls at MIDI or arrangement or pretty much anything to do with the startup of a creative process. Where Pro Tools really shines though is in mixing and mastering stages of production, which is why I am so used to using that as that's kind of been the last 20 years of my life. Logic Pro has a lot of really cool templates built right into it, whereas Pro Tools is pretty more straightforward for uh, tracking and mixing and mastering. In order for me to get up and running in Logic pretty quickly, I have duplicated some of my Pro Tools templates over here in the Logic format. I have my quickies for Modular and Kronos and Integra, all those things. I don't, I guess I don't see my songwriter quickie in here. So that's Logic anyway. I'm, I can't get deep into Logic because I don't know it that well. I am a Pro Tools guy, but I wanted to just show off uh, what a different DAWs templates might look like. And one thing that's great about both of these DAWs and all DAWs I imagine is that you can create your own templates once you decided on an effective and efficient workflow for you. Workflow is the most important thing to me even above the creative process. Let me explain. While I shouldn't have to explain this, I will for that one person watching this video that has no idea how they ended up here, but got hooked by the soothing sound of my voice. A moment ago, I made the bold statement that an efficient workflow is more important to me anyway, than even being creative. What I mean by this is best demonstrated as follows. And those of you who create in your space will know exactly what I'm talking about. Let's say I get a random burst of creativity while doing nothing really important. What happens next is a make or break sequence of events. I go to the studio and flick on the equipment rack. While that's starting up, I turn on my main keyboard or controller in the studio. I then start the DAW Pro Tools and 45 minutes later when it's done relicensing everything, I'm staring at the dashboard asking me what I want to do. The next thing to do is load a session and get started with my idea. 25 years ago, let me tell you how this went. 
I was doing nothing important when I get an idea. I go to the studio and turn on the VS-1880 hard disk recorder from 1998. I turn on the PC and wait for it to boot. I turn on the amplifier. I turn on the speakers. I turn on the MIDI interface. I turn on the AD converter. I turn on the synths I want to start with, usually the QS8 back then. The VS-1880 says there is no SP diff signal, it is unlocked. Turn the synth off and on a few times until the clocks sync and we get a 48 kilohertz lock. Launch Cakewalk Pro Audio 9 and wait for it to find the MIDI interface. Oop, the MIDI driver didn't init. Close Cakewalk and reboot the computer. Try again, this time Cakewalk finds the driver. At the dashboard, we create a new session. We arm the tracks and set the MIDI channel and Cakewalk tells me no MIDI input device. All of this took no less than 45 minutes usually and by the time I was done getting all the peripherals talking to each other, the idea was gone and I'd shut everything down and go back to doing something unimportant. I stopped this story at the dashboard because once I got into Cakewalk and tried syncing MTC to the VS-1880 recorder, it was just chaos entirely. This is why 99% of my previous Cakewalk work sessions have no clock or tempo sync. They were just hit record and play, save and close and move on. It was absolutely horrible. But honestly, I had no idea it was horrible. I thought this was just how it was. And I thought I was the fanciest guy in the block because I had all this equipment that one out of 40 times it all worked perfectly and it was a badass little home recording studio in 1986 through 2009. Think about that. Over 20 years, I tolerated absolute mayhem thinking it was so amazing. Fucking dummy. There was no internet. There was no YouTube. There was no sound on sound. No Sweetwater knowledge base to show me my setup was utter shite, and that no, struggling that much to boot up a music studio was absolutely not normal. Anyway, this is supposed to be about templates, but I'm giving you this peek at my origin story because when I got into Pro Tools 15 years ago, holy shit did my life change, and honestly, I think because Pro Tools LE9 and the 003 factory bundle was such a leap forward, an advancement for my home studio recording, I kind of feel obligated to worship DigiDesign and Avid Pro Tools to this very day. Although I do use Logic Pro X sometimes, and I am dying to learn Bitwig 5. Uh, anyway, templates. I'm supposed to be talking about templates. Back to 2024. And what you see on the screen right now is the template we built in the previous video, link above, and a template I called my Songwriter Quickie, because it has everything I need already laid out. I have the three master faders going to my three outputs in my studio. I have a print track. I got a comp track with a limiter plugin and a VU meter for monitoring levels before and after the limiter. I've got my vocal track and its sub here. I have my virtual instrument folder and all of my virtual instruments inside here, all with their individual subs here for different types like bass, guitar, and uh, V inst, which are all the virtual instruments I might choose to use. I then have my two instruments that I usually use, which is a Kronos and somebody else, but I also shoehorn in here my piano and the modular, you can see here. Then coming up, I have what's called the band, which is 16 channels, multi-timbral Integra, that's the Integra 7 module by Roland. I then have Easy Drummer in its own folder, and I also have another five MIDI channels for Integra drums, should I choose to use Integra drums instead of Easy Drummer. And finally, I have the effects rack, which again is just one way of doing it. Honestly, the slowest thing about getting started today is deciding on a session name and picking a folder I want to store it in. Let me show you that process real quick. To start a new session, I will go to File and New. And again, I pick the session. Here I am I'm at New Session. I'm picking the template group GC templates, and here are all of my particular templates. And then we look through the list. You can see here there's a blank, which is a completely blank slate that we started with in the last video. Uh, all virtual instruments. All of these are exactly what they sound like. Here's all the synths through the Mackie. Here's my live studio. Here's a MIDI studio, which I don't even use really, but it's there just in case. House band mostly uses the Integra. Here's an Integra Quickie to just get up and running on. Uh, anything with a Quickie is just one particular instrument and maybe a vocal track just to get an idea sketched out. So Kronos, of course, has everything mapped for Kronos. When I do my mastering, I have a, a template for mastering. Modular DI is when I use the Bifaco ACDC to come, come directly into to 
the DAW with multiple channels. Uh, otherwise, it's stereo left, right, in with modular quickie. Podcasts is a thing I don't really do, but I set it up mostly for another channel that I am working on for gaming podcasts. And uh, so I, I did create a template for just speaking. Mostly it's speaking. It has uh, a couple of miscellaneous uh, audio tracks. Songwriter Quickie, you saw me build the other day. And uh, VST Quickie is, again, mostly just getting up and running with virtual instruments. So showing this in practice, let's pretend that I have a song idea I want to sketch out. And there are a couple of templates I could use. I could use the Kronos Quickie if I plan to use Korg Kronos Workstation to sketch out an idea. Or if I think I'll develop an entire song in this one session, I'll go with my Songwriter Quickie because it has the full house band preset in it. So let's do that right now. I usually pick a location called Raw Stuff because that's where all my raw ideas go <laughs> ever since June of 1979. And then name the session. I usually have a specific naming convention that I use, something like 2024-08-06. So I'll start all of my sessions at naming them year, month, day like this. And then, uh, what, song idea. Let's just call it song idea. And then I click create. And that's it. I now have a new sketch pad, an enormous sketch pad, but a sketch pad nonetheless, to start my new idea. Anyway, I was supposed to be demonstrating how fast I can get up and running from idea to studio launch to creative process. With that, the first thing I usually do is activate my V piano, and I'll usually pick a favorite piano like the Japanese Home Clean. This happens to be the Arturia V Piano 3, by the way. So I'll arm the track here and then test it out. All right, everything's working. <laughs> kind of miracle. Usually by 40 seconds from idea to launch, to name the session, to activate the piano, to test it out, it's about 40 seconds. And that's pretty amazing. At this point, I could set the session tempo if I want, or if I don't want to worry about tempo right now, I could just simply hit record and play to start jamming an idea. If I am sticking to tempo, I will of course have a click track so I can hear the meter. The great part about working with MIDI is that I can now do a number of things with this. Once it's recorded, I can change the velocity, I can change my sustain pedal if I choose to, I can modify the notes, slide things around, all kinds of cheating that you could do this way. But let's say uh, for another example, I wanted to aim this at a different instrument. Like maybe the piano was great to lay down the track, but now I want to play some other instrument in my arsenal. Let's aim it at the Integra channel two because it's got a different instrument down below. So now it's an acoustic guitar, or maybe we want it to be something else. So this is where you can just change, keep changing things around until you find the thing you want. This is what's super convenient about using MIDI. Which I'm sure everybody watching this already knows. But I wanted to just show, here I am, I, I'm 45 seconds in, I hit the record button, I laid down a quick piano riff that I want, and I could spend the time right now to figure out if that's the instrument I want, or I can just lay down a bunch of stuff and do it later. Let's say, for instance, now I want to do a bass guitar. So I want to take the bass guitar and, and come up with something to go with that piano piece. So in this case, I pre-recorded this little bass part here. And for this, I'm using a fretless bass in the, uh, in the Air Instruments Expand module. It's not very good, but that's what I got. <laughs> oh, so now I want a drum beat. I want some simple little drum beat to go with this. So I'm going to bring in my easy drummer here. I usually go to the grooves, pop rock, maybe you know, pick anything here, find a pattern that I like. Oops, hold on, I got to turn on my drums. So 
once I find a simple thing that I want, I can usually drag this right out to the Easy Drummer uh, MIDI channel here and wind up with a drum pattern. And so then I wind up with piano, bass, guitar, drum sound uh, pretty quickly. Is what I'm trying to demonstrate here is we're showing something getting put together very quickly. This entire piece that I've been developing here just for the demo of this video comes from the Ample Guitar Taylor riffs. So there's riffs in this in this particular plugin and it's this sounds kind of like this. Which to me sounds absolutely beautiful. I also dragged that that MIDI to the timeline here and so all together it kind of sounds like this and again this is within two or three minutes of getting this set up that I have this idea recorded and then in will come my piano and drums And the fun doesn't stop here because now I can take these copies of piano or bass lines, I can add them to different instrument VSTs or like other guitars or in the Integra 7 distorted guitar and build up a bunch of sounds. Now, of course, this isn't an actual creative idea. This is just showing why I created this songwriter quickie template. So I have a piano, bass, assorted guitars, my drum kit, and really anything else in my studio relatively easy. All MIDI I.O. is mapped, all audio I.O. is mapped, my master faders are set, and I'm up and running in less than two minutes and my idea is cooking. This really has changed my life over the last 10 years. I have a template called Kronos Quickie because it's actually the Kronos that I use to jot down most of my ideas because it is just a beast of a workstation keyboard. And it has gorgeous pianos and strings and e-pianos, which are all my favorite noises. Kronos is also usually sitting right next to me and turned on 90% of the time I'm in the main studio. So let's make a quickie session for Kronos and I'll show you that it is just a simple MIDI plus audio track with some effects routing just to get some quick ideas down. The next quickie I use a lot is the modular quickie and I'm talking hundreds upon hundreds of sessions have been made using this modular quickie. Take a look real quick at the Kronos quickie session and you'll see how it compares to modular in a moment. Just based on my own organization skills, I usually don't put modular in with my song raw stuff. So there's another location that I put these in and unsurprisingly, it happens to be called Eurorack. <laughs> so, so we named it uh, here and we're gonna hit the create button. These quickie templates are very much the same, but I made them separate due to their configs being different. Like modular comes out of channels five and six and I do not have any effects processing on modular and only slight EQ and compression to keep the wall of sound coming from modular under control. This template does have a Vox because most of the time I am working on modular, I am talking into a microphone too and recording with a camera because everything is still a learning experience and I document everything because you never know when you might need a clip for YouTube. This is all there really is to modular quickie. The rack itself, everything sums up to one stereo out of the mixer and goes into this stereo track for print. I really do not do much processing on modular track because I want to get it sounding great in the rack itself, should I ever need to do something live. This one is a biggie. This session is mostly for live multi-instrument and voice sessions in the studio. You can see here I have two Vox tracks. I have the C7 piano mic pair, the stereo in from modular, and my 13 hardware synths in the room. On the right side of the session are my virtual instruments I may use with the live session instruments such as the Taylor or Martin acoustic guitars and Juno and Juno 106 synthesizers. Also my virtual Burt Easy Drummer and then ending of course here with my usual FX rack. 
For the synths in the room, I have only one MIDI channel to start with since all sessions start somewhere. As I add instruments to my composition, I will add MIDI tracks or instrument tracks to support it. This is a super fun session to jam out on in the studio. Like imagine getting many of my synths going with drones or arps and enter the wall of sound from the modular and then finally I get to sit down at the conservatory grand monster piano and play with my orchestra. This is an amazing time to be alive. I would love to do some live concert stuff on YouTube or Twitch like I see others do because that's truly my background long ago, a working musician. However, I haven't made it a priority because I see that viewers usually do not give a shit about original music or performance as much as reviews and tutorials. But oh well, I guess that's their loss. Maybe someday. Likely the second most obnoxious session I have set up is the All Virtual Instruments template. This is not one I use to create usually, but what I really get out of this massive instrument session is reviewing the instruments themselves, sound design or an exploration or sketching out some ideas that will eventually be ported over to Songwriter Quickie or something. I've tried to organize a majority of my instruments by their manufacturer. Take Ample Sound for example. How I manage resources on these is to simply mark the entire channel as inactive until I need it, like this beautiful Taylor guitar here. Ample guitars are pretty amazing. I also have these Air instruments, the ones that I've had since day one with Pro Tools. I like them a lot. Unfortunately, they are AAX only, and therefore I cannot use them with Logic or Bitwig. Boom is a great little drum machine. And Expand is otherworldly. I absolutely love that instrument. It's so massive. The sounds, especially the synth sounds and pads and leads and basses, and the sequences for a pretty cheap little instrument. This is kind of amazing. The next folder is Arturia V Collection 9. And that's as far as I took it because even with these 33 instruments, I barely use most of them. My favorites are the B3 organ, the Fairlight CMI, the Yamaha CS80, the DX7, which doesn't really match my DX7 in the room, but I guess close enough. And I am absolutely in love with the Juno 60 virtual instrument because I lost my Juno long ago and have missed it ever since 1988. The OPXA is a pretty cool instrument as well. And you've already seen me messing with the Piano V3 here. And of course there's Pigments, which is an Arturia original synth that everybody absolutely is crazy about. I haven't quite grasped it yet myself, but I've played with it a little bit. And then of course we have the Prophet 5, we have an emulation of the old Solina string machine. Another one I really like is the SQ80 virtual synth. And finally, when you feel like getting your Ray Charles on, we have the old Stage 73 stage piano. Okay, shit, maybe I do use a lot of them after all. After this comes my Cherry Audio collection. If you're a classic synth nut like me, you'll have to check out Cherry Audio. They do a bang up job recreating some amazing old synths including creating some of their own, like the Dream Synth and Signs. My favorites here are the GX80, which again is another CS80 type instrument. Uh, the Low Down I use for uh, for Taurus pedals and low bass, sub bass stuff. And, uh, and I really love the Quadra because Tony Banks used it, so therefore I automatically love it. And of course we have the Dream Synth here and the Signs Synth here that are both original instruments by Cherry Audio. All right, so now we're getting into crazy town. While this folder doesn't look terribly full, this is my Spitfire audio collection, and it is f***ing vast. See that channel called Albions? This is six libraries in one. So it's the six Albion instruments, plus I also added the soft nylon guitar long ago when I first purchased it. And then there's Colossus, Aperture, Hammers, and Mercury, all monsters. And Labs itself has like a hundred instruments in it. I mean, look at this list of sounds that are in here. This is amazing how much stuff is in here. And Labs is all free. Free. Oh, I love free. Look, I'm still scrolling. All of this is in Labs. It's pretty goddamn amazing. Spitfire audio. But the real kicker here is the first Spitfire library I ever bought BBC Symphony Orchestra and Eric Whitaker Choir. 
because like most former rock stars, I consider myself quite the composer in my old age. Though no, I do not have anything to demonstrate because I haven't finished a damn thing in five years. But pretty much everything in my Spitfire collection is my favorite. I can count nothing as second best. I mean, listen to this. <laughs> just, uh, just love it. The miscellaneous folder are just instruments that are standalone and not part of an enormous set, like Dune 3, which I love, Dune 3. And here is where I put my Easy Drummer, and a couple of other Oberheim synths, and Serum, which I never got used to, and the monstrous, ridiculously enormous, gargantuan UVI Falcon instrument. And I have a ton of sound packs. Let's open that up real quick. Here are the instrument collections that I've purchased from UVI. Usually it was a bundle. It was a pretty cheap bundle once upon a time, like maybe 200 bucks or something for, for all of them. And now I have all of these instruments that I can play with at any given time. And believe me, the number of presets is mind boggling. And yes, you can get really lost in preset land just by going through every single instrument and trying things out over and over. But I, I try not to do that too much. Like if I know I want to mess with uh, with a Jupiter, you know, Jupiter or JP stuff, I know I can just come in here and pick one. Saturn 8, we're not going to call it Jupiter, <laughs> apparently. Load one of them up and press a note. I mean, no, this doesn't look like a Jupiter at all, does it? How about a, how about a Jupiter 4? Where is a... Let's arm that thing. Let's hit something on the keyboard. So as you can see, that's kind of what I use this massive instrument template for, is just to goof around and listen to different sounds, or to find a sound that I want to use without having to set up every single virtual instrument in every single session. I just come to this one, find the sound that I plan to use, and then go to my actual destination session, and then load that one specific patch up. It's, it, it makes sense to me. <laughs> I don't know if it makes sense to you, but it makes sense to me. This template is pretty huge too, but it is straightforward compared to some of the others. This is the template I used for tons of live shows and st streamed out of my studio between 2010 and 2019. The template started out small with a few keyboards and one to two guitars, maybe three vocals, but by 2019, we had six vocalists, five guitars, and a number of keyboardists using my gear mostly, and two live drum kits at times. It was a crowded room. But check this out. This session has all the channels already set up with all the sends to effects, most of the equalizers and compressors in place, and they're all set up and ready to go. All summed to comp channel and not only fed to headphones in the room, but also to the main PA and a feed, which was the audio out for a stream over, over the internet, usually through YouTube or Twitch. And so we could literally come in here, open this template, arm the channels, hit record, and we're streaming. And it was that simple. It was really <laughs> pretty awesome to be up and running so quickly. Everyone knows how much I love my modular journey, but nothing compares to the joy I had when jamming music with a room full of friends. It's unfortunate that the great pandemic destroyed all of that. In January of 2021, my life in music changed forever. I, I pulled the trigger. On, I say that a lot, don't I? <laughs> Something changed my life forever. I pulled the trigger on one of the biggest risks in my virtual instrument sound library history. I paid for an entire orchestra in a box on my desk. Gone are the days of trying to make synthesizer strings sound realistic. Gone are the days of synth brass. Gone are the days of trying to tune harmonics just right to make a piccolo sound like a musical instrument and not a dying canary. All kidding aside, some of the best synthesizer orchestrations I had ever heard come out of the Roland Supernatural Engine and the K-Pro Orchestra in my Chord Kronos. However, gone are those days. Sorry guys. This template, which is so f***ing huge that I almost cannot comprehend it, was designed by Christian Henson, formerly of Spitfire Audio, and uh, what's his name? Jake, uh, Jake Jackson? 
And to really understand this template, you kind of have to understand BBC Symphony Orchestra Pro and how things are laid out. Let me just show you one quick example. If I come to the BBC Symphony Orchestra player plugin here, you could see I have selected a brass section called horns and it sounds kind of like this. Right? And this is of course the legato articulation here. Let me show you what that sounds like. So it sounds kind of neat like that. But what I, what I want to show you here is that this uh, this one plug in here with this just this one instrument, this one section of instruments here has all of these articulations laid out here. So we have legato, we have we have a extended legato, a normal legato, we have a long, which would be polyphonic, more, more than one note. There's also muted and b blasty, <laughs> super blasty. And anyway, so it has it just has a ton of articulations in here. So what they did with this template, what Christian and Jake did with this template is they broke it down into every single track is every single articulation of every single instrument. And I mean, it is crazy. Well, let me revert this back to save. So now again, taking a look at the brass section, you can see there is a, a horn legato, a horn long, a horn short, longs muted, for instance. In other words, look at how many different <laughs> brass instruments there are because there are this many different types of brass. So let me pop this up. So again, we're looking at horn legato. So look how this now has, here's our brass, it's our horns, it's our legato. And if you look at the list of horns, you have horns, you have horns a four, you have trumpets, trumpets a three, trombones, trombones three. These are all the different, uh, just the brass related instruments. And every one of these has all of those articulations that I was showing here, all of these articulations. So it is just a gigantic library <laughs> of things. And they made a nice little free template for all of us. I'm pretty sure anybody can download this, but of course you need BBC Pro in order to use these virtual instruments as they're assigned, or you could reassign your own virtual instruments to this kind of a template, which as you can see, I kind of did that with my all virtual instruments template as you see how I got this idea to leave everything inactive until I need it because these are enormous sound libraries and they cannot possibly all be active at the same time at least not on my old 2015 Mac <laughs> maybe maybe if I move up in the in the world I can have every single part of my 200 piece orchestra <laughs> all enabled at the same time so the same thing is true for uh, for down here in the percussion section we got percussion here here's all the strings so we have violins and violas and cellis and basses uh, and just ama amazing. It is probably my favorite library in my entire collection that I have no idea how to use because it is so enormous and, uh, and I'm working on it. So this orchestra is made up of strings, brass, percussion, and woodwinds. Woodwinds up here. So now you got your woodwinds as well. And it's meant to be an actual symphony orchestra. It's actual, these aren't synthesized versions of instruments. These are actual recordings of humans playing their instruments in all these different articulations, which is just a thing I can barely wrap my mind around to begin with. But anyway, this is not about libraries. This is about templates. And this is the most ridiculous template that I have, and I did not create it. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you, as always, Christian Henson, for your contribution. In conclusion, I will say while I have about a dozen more templates, the ones I showcased here today are the ones I use the most often and have the most success with. As I mentioned in the beginning, Pro Tools, Logic, and likely many other DAWs come with the set of default templates you can use to start your sessions, or use them to learn how to route signals in your DAW and audio, you know, to your audio interface. I don't know if seeing what I do is helpful, but it has been a learning experience that has lasted 15 years or more to finally get to a place where I can click on a couple of buttons and be up and running almost 99% of the time without fail. Very, very rarely does the Mac need to be restarted, and there's definitely a startup order to things just like 25 years ago, but today I do not have to fiddle around for 45 minutes to get an idea out of my head and onto paper, so to speak. If you found anything useful here and would like to see more content like this, 
tap that like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this coming soon. As always, thank you very much for watching and take care everyone.